Uh, it is I, your tour guide, to the world of darkness in tonight's tale. I shall tell you of the Tassimi, the Jimasei, and by whatever of a dozen pronunciations you know them by, in the dead of night, you merely need know the name Fiend, for no nickname is more utterly precise and perfect to describe a blood than that for them. For they are that in so many ways, and such we shall delineate here in course of my tale. But it starts in the hoary, black, shadowy country of Eastern Europe, for that is where their blood goes back to. They were the voivodes of those days, those times long forgotten, but still those keeps, those castles that tourists take pictures of from far off still exist in Romania, and they still snap pictures, but they don't get too close, because there's something alive in the masonry and stonework, something unwholesome there, and something that if you were to come into his territory, you may well be met most unforgivingly. However, they can be reasoned with if one can approach them in a correct fashion, and that is why I tell you this, for while they are monsters, unabashedly, they have a certain compassion when dealt with in a fashion to their liking if you genuflect before them and know them as the lords that they are, the princes and bring forth a certain sort of etiquette. They can be dealt with, they can be dealt with, and that is most important for you to know, for they are civil and civilized, but only after the strangest and most aliens of fashions, for they are fiends. But when shown the proper respect, in their kingdom, they can be the most regal and genteel of hosts. Learn what respect they need be paid. It is well worth the research, for that will save you from a fate a thousand times worse than meeting your end at the dawn's embrace. For you will have spent centuries after that time when they took you and broke you and turned your bone and flesh into whatever object amused them, whether it is a coat or a clock or a chair, you could spend the next hundred years as an armoire, seeing everything around you, but it won't matter after a point. The horrors that are visited and seen there on a nightly basis will surely compound with the horror of your new state to break your mind and drive any vestige of sanity long out of it still it must be a most horrid fate one you must avoid for their vicissitude their changing power of the bone of the flesh is most horrendous and i tell you it is so that they can make you into anything they want and they're once a most strange, for you see, vicissitude is like a disease. It is not like potence or auspex, not a strength of the blood that gets stronger and stronger. It is a parasite that gets in your blood like a disease. It's like a vampiric version of AIDS. And the blood-borne pathogen gets into you, the parasite of another world. They are strange alien things that infest from planes and places that I best not speak of, but they are repulsively demonic in their aspect and in their design. Their desire is to transmogrify these Jimasei into something of their own enjoyment, a host form better fitting to the parasite, a body more to their own liking, and this is why they look so strange. If you ever look at the alien visages of the gods of Hinduism, you will know that the fiends were there centuries ago consorting with the populace to be worshipped and respected and paid that etiquette, that politeness, that genuine awe that which they feast and desire on more so than they would any blood that respect, and that is the key to be used against them. 
for that is perhaps the only thing that can keep you safe for what you have is merely the gifts of Cain they have something from some foul hell churning and bubbling inside them changing their mind and body as it has their soul and inflicting that upon the world this strange eldritch worldview that they bring about as they slowly slip from being whatever they were as a living person to being the flesh receptacle for a parasite looking so strange with six arms or a dozen eyes or quills coming out of their nostrils or a dozen mouths filled with mosquito-like suckers these proboscis bleeding into things. I have seen things even worse than this but I do not wish to cause you to regurgitate your blood over the night. But if that isn't enough to scare you, I will tell you this also of their clan. There is a vampire that is known by every single person in the world. Is the most famous of them. And you should easily figure who I am speaking of. And you would say, oh yes, he isn't real. Oh no, you are very wrong, for he still walks the nights in the old country. In Europe, and even England, some say. He is out there, the blood prince, the impaler looking to work his own machinations upon the jihad and he is most assuredly of the blood of Jemassé. Yes, he has brought forth a elegant ruse to fool the whole world to throw hunters off his trail that were getting too close, bringing his ghoul Bram Stoker in to write a tale to make people think that well, he never lived at all and most ignorant people will never believe that he existed. <laughs> they will not understand the history, the fact that the Zivoyvode ruled Valachia, that he ruled Transylvania as two duchies, that he was the most vicious of men, and now he still roams the world so clever that he's made the world believe he is nothing but fiction. That is the power of their ability, for they are not limited merely to vicissitude, but they understand the powers of the mind in many different forms and fashions as well as the powers of the body and their disciplines are very strong. After all, they were the minds behind the creation of the Sabbat itself and its most prominent supporters. And the reason they have, the reason the Camarilla has so angered them is the Camarilla's embrace. And perhaps if the Camarilla had been more wise, they could have had the Jemassé. But they embraced the treacherous Tremere, the Tremere who are themselves merely a bloodline of Jemassage for this budding heretical group of the Order of Hermes stole the blood of a Jemassé elder and swallowed it down, taking in that life. And there has been more than a rift between the two clans since, and there is not one, not one anti-tribu Jemassé that calls the Camarilla, his home. That is a level of animosity shared by all of them, and I assure you, there are a few Jemassé out there that do not care for the bloodborne parasite, that they know exactly what it is and what it is doing to them, to their clan, to their noble name. They are called the Shadow Crusade, and they hunt their brethren. They are the old ways and they bring down the blades and the Coldun sorcery, calling elemental spirits of forgotten names and dealing out unbelievable amounts of suffering to those who are so infected, but in so doing, liberating them from life itself and curing the disease one body at a time. They are out there as well. They are not as unified as you might think when you see a Sabbat pack priest cackling as he embraces a tattoo artist or a plastic surgeon or a strange mad scientist as he embraces a modern primitive or perhaps even an aristocrat a bureaucrat, a lawyer, a man of high mental standing for you see these things are treasured even amongst the lowest most degenerate Sabbat 
as you may say. They are still known there, for that blood still calls for the supremacy, the finest selections of mortal cattle to be brought into the ranks of the elder lords. And it is that discarding of these cattle, the giving of the blood to them for even amongst the Sabbat, they are the most heavy practitioners of the practice of ghouling, but when you have the ability to transmogrify flesh and blood and bone and organs, why merely make your ghoul look like anyone else's? When well, you can take eight men and sew them together through the power of your vicissitude into a monstrous beast, the kind of thing only thought of in the modern nights in horror cinema, though these things are very real and very out there, and in those same castles that they don't allow you to visit in Romania and other places in the Eastern Europe. And even here, in America, you will see some of them. Well, you won't live to tell about it. But the war ghouls are there, as are men transformed into the forms of hounds or hounds, and men put together and changed into something entirely different, and they also consort with entire families where they have infested them so heavily with the vitae of Cain, that they become revenants, ghouls, producing ghouls, producing ghouls, producing ghouls, in an endless cycle of inbreeding and instability, and they pay homage to these dark lords, for they must, for the respect must be shown, or the blood will be taken, and that is most certain. Uh, there's one other rumor that I've heard from the sewer-dwelling trolls and their rat-speaking whispers they come and tell me. Tale, for I live on the east coast of America, and just a few states to the north, they say, there is a blob, an amorphous amoeba-like thing with tendrils that shift and shake and change and devour whatever it wishes around it. They say it's there under the great city in the sewers, devouring, waiting, plotting, playing the game, the eternal struggle of the kindred. And they say, it calls out in dreams to the other Jemasse, calling and pulling at them by blood, for they say, there, under the streets of New York City, exists and lives the antediluvian of the most horrifying clan.